I think that the the interesting thing about the ayahuasca session was that you are essentially laying down with a bowl next to you just in the event that you might need to vomit. I, I fortunately didn't have to, though um, maybe it was because I stuck with the diet, whereas a friend of mine who didn't quite stick with the diet ended up using it. Um, I remember laying down and just looking up at the ceiling. Uh, it was pitch black, no lights, um, middle of the jungle, just the sound of the jungle all around you. And I guess I can go ahead and say that it was... It didn't matter whether your eyes were open or closed, whether you were sitting or laying, whether you were trying to stand up, which was probably ill-advised in the condition that I was in. Um, no matter what, there was a rich, vivid series of um, visions that were that were occupying my head. So to answer your question, were these something that were only happening in my own mind or whether I was somehow privy to another universe or realm or world? It's difficult to say. I certainly, I think that it has something to do with vibrational frequencies and harmonies and how the reality that you view every day around you is, is the confluence of all these different light reflections and things vibrating at a certain consistent way that builds this semblance of what we would consider to be the real world, which is in fact a, a, a realm that's rife with uh, overlaps and blank spots and, and, and things that, that it's not really as real and as tangible as like reach out and touch that, okay, that's something solid. Um, you don't necessarily have to have a scientific view of the world to realize that with something like ayahuasca, something being solid is only the way that it's vibrating. I mean, in fact, you know, if you're looking at a rock, that rock is in, in itself um, just basically hollow. Um, the particles are just vibrating in such a way that it vibrates against another rock or your hand or your head or whatever so that it, they don't pass through each other. But in fact, in a kind of a scientific way of looking at things, they're, they're both just very small numbers of particles that are occupying the space. Um, so I guess by way of saying that, I guess let me back up and say that if, if, if you if you look at it scientifically, perhaps the process of uh, undergoing an ayahuasca session, it enables you to view uh, certain vibrational frequencies uh, that seem just as real as those which during a normal non-mediated time frame are like just like sitting right in front of you, like just like you're sitting right in front of me. You might see just a massive swirling scaled creature that's just kind of you know, might be your DNA replicating itself right in front of you or something. And you just, and you don't question it. You can't, you can reach out and touch it and perhaps, but I don't remember it feeling like, I don't remember anything in the way of actually feeling like there was something on touching you or that you could reach out and grab something per se. So whether or not those things that I was viewing were glimpses into another realm or whether they were entirely within my own head, Probably the answer lies somewhere between those two, I would say. Though certainly I was not euphoric in any way. There was, I would have to roll over from one side to the next because I was just on a very skinny futon that wasn't particularly comfortable. And I could feel that, wow, like my left side isn't getting as much blood as it needs, you know, so I would move over. So there were real world things that were making my body address me in the same ways that it does that makes you roll over in a normal night's sleep that during the ayahuasca, I was having to address the same issues. But then as soon as I would roll over, I would immediately have my attention taken back to this kind of extra vibrational realm, during which there was just incredibly vivid, uh, full color uh, visions of just all sorts of remarkable things that I would consider to be past and present. I mean, things that you would be experiencing. I mean, it was, it was largely, it seemed to have to do with different uh, supernatural creatures Though whether those were just the ways that certain things happen to look in the, in the, when you're in the zone, who knows. But um, the fact that there was tons of uh, kind of like scaled, snaky, and uh, lizard-like entities that were kind of slithering about, not threatening in any way. Not, uh, I guess there's kind of a, a mammalian sort of fear that we have hardwired into us to watch out for things that have scales and that slither around, probably dating back to the days that we were arboreal and 
had to watch out for those sorts of things, that there was no fear or animosity between myself and these creatures that were all around. They were almost like, if I could invoke a Dungeons and Dragons terminology, they were like familiars. They were like friends that essentially were facilitating this experience um, and somehow getting you closer to a more natural uh, realm, I guess you could say.